yung uh, sinumpaang sa laysay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On September 12, 2024 and September 27, 2024, I was invited to serve as a resource speaker during the recent legislative inquiry conducted by the Joint Committee on Dangerous Drug Public Order and Safety, Human Rights and Public Accounts of the Honorable House of Representatives regarding the investigation into the war on drugs of the previous administration. During these hearings, I was asked several questions concerning my knowledge or involvement in the deaths of three Chinese inmates of the Davao Penal Colony and the death of General Wesley Barayuga, all focusing on the alleged extrajudicial killings of the aforementioned individuals. I was also questioned about my relationship with the former president, as well as my career as a police officer and my tenure as the general manager of the Philippine Charity Ship Stakes Office. Throughout the hearings, I answered questions from the committee based on my personal knowledge. However, I did so with great apprehension as I recognized that my statements on national television could significantly endanger my life, the safety of my family. <laughs> and other very close to me. After considerable reflection, I am now executing this affidavit to provide a comprehensive information to the Quadcom regarding everything I personally know about the war on drugs during the former administration. <laughs> on, on May, <laughs> 2026, I received a call from the President Rodrigo Roa Duterte at approximately 5 a.m. instructing me to meet him at his residence in Tonya Luisa, Dapo City. I was already acquainted with them with the mayor having served as the station commander in one of the police stations in Davao City during his tenure. During our meeting, he requested that I will locate a PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on drugs on a national level replicating the double model. <laughs> the double model referred to the system involving payment and rewards. <laughs> the double model involves three levels of payment of rewards. <laughs> First is the reward if the suspect is killed. Second, if is the funding of planned operations. And the third is the refund of operational expenses. Uh, Colonel Garma, can you speak louder? Uh, I, I'm sorry, speak closer to the microphone. Initially, I informed the president that I was unaware of any individual with those qualifications, as I had not been assigned outside of Davao City or had served in the national capacity within the PNP. However, I recalled my upperclassman, Edilberto Leonardo, who was heading the Criminal Investigation Detection Group and was also a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I mentioned his name to the president. On the same day, a certain individual named Mooking contacted me to request for the phone number of Leonardo's contact details, which I promptly provided. A week later, I learned from Arthur Narsolis via phone call that Sir Leonardo had been summoned and was instructed to proceed to the Royal Mandaya Hotel in Davao for a meeting. <laughs> 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 
Leonardo informed me later that he stayed at the hotel for almost three days, during which the president directed him to organize, according to Sir Leonardo, a task force, which he understood as PA of TF. When Leonardo relayed this information, urged me to join the task force, I declined first, citing my lack of experience in handling said operations. Leonardo subsequently informed me that he had prepared a proposal wrote it to Bongo, outlining the task force, which would encompass the Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. subsequently informed me that they had prepared a proposal wrote it to Bongo confirming the task force operation which would encompass Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. He also inquired if he and his classmates could have a courtesy call with the president through Bongo for a photo opportunity. Considering this, I thought it prudent to invite also my classmates to join the courtesy call. So in the presence of Colonel Bacay, Vilela, Grijaldo, Tuzon, and Duenas, the member of class 97 and 96 were accommodated in separate rooms at the DPWH office in Panacan, Davao City. The president did not enter our room and I was unaware if he visited the room of class 96. After the courtesy call, Leonardo informed me that the structure of the mentioned task force would undergo changes. In June of 2016, Leonardo has transferred from Manila to assume the position of the chief of the CIDG Region 11. During the initial three months of the assignment, I facilitated all meetings between Leonardo and Bongo at Leonardo's request. Subsequently, they established direct communication. <laughs> Leonardo informed me that he had recalled several trusted personnel, namely Lester, Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, Palma, Peter Parungo to serve as operative for the task force, notably Bactat. Serbo and Palma were, for now, discharged from the police service. <laughs> Romel Bactad, Serbo, Palma were all former police officers stationed at the CIDG 11 office. They were discharged from the service on or about a year ago due to an operation that led to the killing of one individual. Lester Bergano is, is a provide citizen, while Peter Parunga was a former detainee of CIDG due to a charge of rape that has been cleared. 
Kamel Bakhtat, Cerebral Palma, and Parunga were charged with the task of collecting and verifying information provided by police officers in the field concerning arrests, deaths of individuals named in the list of drug personalities, and creating summary reports. All of these reports would then be encoded and compiled by Lester Bergano. The compilation is thereafter elevated to Sir Leonardo, who will decide what level the arrest or killing was and its corresponding reward. Rewards were only given for killings, while for arrest, only for the funding of Copland and refund for operational expenses was given. I saw how these individuals operated when I would visit my friend in CIDG 11. He conveyed that the task force would be structured differently and that he submitted a document to Bongo detailing the task force operation, including an overview of the current drug landscape in the Philippines. I was informed that the drug structure originated from Bucor, where numerous drug lords are currently incarcerated, and that it has three branches, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, with Peter Lim involved in the Visayas region. Once the task force became operational, I later le learned that all Copland's funds, refunds for operational expenses, and rewards for agents were processed through the account of Peter Parungo. Currently, Lester Bergano maintained a comprehensive list of the drug personalities of the Philippines. Leonardo conducted briefings for all PDEA, IG regional directors, and PNP chiefs regarding the drug situation. Additionally, if any individual died during police operations, Leonardo will report the incidents to Bongo for inclusion in the weekly report and request for refunds operational expenses. Leonardo had final authority to determine who would be included in the list of drug personalities and to classify their threat level as well as the discretion to remove individuals from the list. Furthermore, in 2016, while I was at the CIDG office following up the appointments of my personnel, I overheard Padilla discussing drug activities at the Davao Penal Connolly with Leonardo. Padilla specifically identified certain Bucor officers involved in drug trade, notably mentioning an officer named Ginto who was subsequently killed along with other Bucor members. These are the critical facts I personally know regarding the drug war of the previous administration. I am prepared to provide additional details and information in a supplemental affidavit or during an executive session at the discretion of the committee. I affirm the truthfulness and accuracy of the above statements to assist in the investigation by the Joint Committee, Your Honours. Mr. Chairman. Uh, go ahead, uh, SDS. 